Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video and another ThinkPad. And here we have a classic retro ThinkPad from 1997-ish, a ThinkPad 380XD. Flip this open here and you can see what's going on. You can see the old 380XD listed up there. What a beautiful machine. Let's take a look at how this puppy's been holding up for... <laughs> 23 some odd years. We'll take a look at the front of the system. Nice thick chonker, eh? Two buttons or two switches here to be able to open up your LCD panel. Stereo speakers. We'll move on to this side here. We've got our hard drive tray here where we've got a uh, original. Uh, it listed originally as a 5.1 gigabyte, but it's a 4.8 gigabyte when it's formatted, at least with like FAT16 or FAT32. Uh, formatting to be able to run on it, uh, but it's a 2.5 inch IDE hard drive. And it's interesting that this hard drive is actually double height. So like a, a regular two and a half inch hard drive is pretty, pretty thin. This one's like two of them stacked on top of each other. So, and that older style, you can tell that was a little bit different. Um, I've got a PCMCA card installed in here. So there's two PCMCIA or card bus slots inside. And then I've got a double height card in here uh, from Zircom back in the day from Turkey, <laughs> a uh, combo card. So it's got a modem and a 10100, I think it's 10100, yeah, 10100 uh, Ethernet connectivity as well for some optional networking capability. Get that plugged back in there. We've got a dial here for our volume on those stereo speakers, microphone and headphones for output, our power switch. Move on to the back here. We've got some great options here for additional connections. A PS2 external mouse port, if you don't, for some reason, like to use the track point. Our mini barrel connector, which was the old ThinkPad style connector. The USB 1.1 port, so there's USB connectivity on this system. A serial port, a parallel port, and a VGA port. So nice external uh, connectivity options there. ERTA, so that's uh, infrared. There's a output here for venting for the system fan, which cools the CPU off. And then a CD-ROM drive and a floppy drive both installed into the system. So this is great, right? We've got this machine. It's an older style laptop. This has got a Pentium 2 processor in it, and it's got everything it needs to be able to run on its own. Uh, we'll take a look quickly at the bottom here. I have the battery removed because it is dead. The battery, of course, is I've got it right here. Um, but it's dead and it makes really strange noises when you plug the power into it. So <laughs> it's usually a good idea not to use a battery when it's acting that type of way. Um, you've got two slots here for docks and that means that this 380 actually supports both of the styles of docks that IBM was putting out at the time. The uh, standard like regular docks and port replicators as well as the selected dock series which was the big docks that you could put like PCI cards and stuff into as well. So some really good options for there. And then this door here we can open up will expose the single sodium e slot for EDO memory and uh, where you can access the CMOS battery to replace that and remove it as needed. So we've got 96 megabytes of RAM installed in here, 32 on board and 164 gig or 164 gig megabyte uh, sodium. And you, are supposedly able to put 128 megabytes sodium, EDO sodium in this as well to get 160 megabytes of RAM. Um, I don't have one, obviously. I only have like SD RAM and DDR RAM sodium style slots, so they won't work on this. It's gotta be EDO memory, uh, but you could technically be able to get a little bit more memory in this as well. Um, but just an amazing little machine. Open it up here and we got some more stuff to look at. Um, first of all, this keyboard. This is, when you hear people talk about the ThinkPad keyboard, this is the real ThinkPad keyboard. These keys are an absolute dream to type on. They are so thick and the travel is great. The sound is spectacular. This is the type of keyboard that novels are written on. Uh, absolutely a joy to type on. And, you know, lovely texture uh, from the old ThinkPad texture. This one is only just the tiniest bit tacky. Uh, so it's still got uh, great condition. And then our original, uh, well not original, but this is a track point three uh, connection. I did have to change the nub. Um, so it is a more modern track point cap on here, um, but still uh, great and easy to use. 
I love this keyboard. Uh, tough for me to get used to things like not having a Windows key and not having the middle mouse track point button here that I'm used to on my, my modern ThinkPads that I use, uh, but absolutely a joy to be able to type on. And then the screen here, this is a 12.1 inch TFT, so it's an active matrix screen, and it's 800 by 600 resolution. And that's really good um, because with the screen size here, if you wanna use a machine like this for something like DOS gaming, a lot of DOS apps and games you're gonna be running are gonna be at 320 by 200 or maybe 640 by 480. And the screen size here, if it's gonna shrink it into a smaller window, could be harder to see if you had like a larger 1024 by 768 screen or something like that. So pretty cool, pretty cool overall. Um, what I thought I might do now is plug it in and we'll boot it up and see what I've loaded on. Okay, let's fire it up. Uh, do I have my power? Let's make sure I've got my volume set okay. And it should be all right. The hard drive starting up, fan going, and here we'll have Windows 98 booting up onto this system. So originally my plan was to get a recovery disk and bring this back to its original form, which would have been Windows 95, and then upgrade it, and then upgrade it to Windows 98 from there. Unfortunately, uh, the only recovery disk that I could find that was on archive.org was not working properly and it just it just wasn't happening there's was something either between the disk itself the recovery files themselves and the floppy disk image to do the recovery boot there was just something not working right with that so i i did end up going back to my original plan of installing windows 98 and then pulling the files off of that image and trying to load as many of them on here as possible so that's why you do see that nice ThinkPad background, which you wouldn't have on a regular install. So we'll just wait here for Windows to finish loading up here. The uh, 98 welcome screen is going to get itself going. You hear that skipping? So interesting what I found like building some previous, you know, Windows 98 systems and using Pentium 4 based machines, which are obviously way too overpowered. You never really come across having performance issues, but I do notice on this machine with, you know, the 96 megabytes of RAM and the Pentium 2 processor, it's like, oh, this is interesting. Like it's, it does actually you know, have a little bit of not too awesome performance. Anyways, I thought I'd show off a couple of things that I thought were neat on this one. So just from an install perspective, it's pretty basic. Windows 98 SE uh, with the unofficial uh, updates for Service Pack 3. I installed Microsoft Office 97 on this as well. And I've got a couple of ThinkPad drivers and the ThinkPad configuration utility, which are, you know, pretty straightforward. I got all of this stuff just off the off the interwebs to be able to take a look at managing the system, keeping control of stuff. We'll take a quick look at the system information here. You can see some BIOS details. It is the, the latest BIOS that was available for the, the system here. All right, and then the other thing I wanted to show off in Windows was some of the other files that I pulled off of this backup of Windows 95. So the first was the user guide for the ThinkPad. So if I go to, I think the, is it index French? That's index French. If I just go to the cover file here, it's gonna open this up in Opera 10, which is, uh, I've got IE6 and Opera 10 installed on here. There is network connectivity available. If I plug the network line in here, 
very simple browsing available to you. But I installed the uh, some stuff in here. So you've got the user's guide uh, that you can be able to use to take a look at stuff on the ThinkPad. That used to be, you know, something you could browse through. Um, oh, I wanted to show off. I wanted to show off some of this stuff here. I think does this work? Oh, this doesn't. I wasn't able to get this actual demo to work. But back in the day, um, here in Canada at least, there was a, a retail store chain called Home Computing, and uh, when you had computers on display, you would have demo reels that would run on a bunch of them, and the ThinkPads had their own demo reel as well. And while the demo reel here, it doesn't seem to be working properly, I do have the media files that are still located in here. So I thought that I would put these both on here. So we've got the the loop, which is the, um, the, the ThinkPad video. And then we've got this one, this one mold.mpg, which is a clip from a video from Duncan Sheik, who you may or may not remember from the nineties, uh, which this type of, this stuff would play through. Um, so I'm just going to quickly open this up and, and we'll enjoy a, a few seconds of this just absolute, um, enjoyment. Better place to think. And this literally would have played all day on any ThinkPads that were set up in the store. Anyways, a little trip down memory lane. <laughs> Okay, so I did put a bunch of stuff on that. The other thing that I did was I wanted to set up uh, DOS mode on here. So I went and pulled, I've got some stuff from Phil's Computer Lab that I like to, to put on these machines. It always is so, it makes it so much easier to be able to set up a Windows 98 and, and DOS connectivity for systems. Um, but I did edit a bunch of that stuff. So I've got the file on here where you can choose the different menus for how you want DOS set up. And then I did set one up on my desktop here that'll just load up with everything assuming that you want all the stuff set up on the system. So we're gonna do a quick reboot into DOS mode here. And what's really great about this system, right? It's sure it runs Windows 98, you can do the office thing, some basic stuff. This, a machine like this really shines when you go and do DOS mode, right? To be able to do DOS mode gaming, where you've got the, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, generally a powerful processor for DOS, You've got tons of memory. You've got a fully Sound Blaster compatible sound card with that Crystal Audio graphics. And the video card that's in here is just a cheap two megabyte Neomagic uh, video card. So it's it's not gonna be good enough to run any high-end games, but it's perfect for running DOS era games. So if we head over to the CD games directory and you know, I've got a bunch of stuff in here. I got Quake, Carmageddon, Need for Speed 2, Mega Man. I've done a bunch of these before. So see something like Descent 2 uh, running on this system. Nice sound, right? I'm just gonna skip through the, the storyline. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. And you can see here, you can see here how things are, how things are looking.
Anyways, so it runs pretty good. And that's what's great about having a machine like this where it can handle any of these like 94 to 97 DOS games that don't have 3D requirements. The sound is fine, but it's all built into one machine. So this can go with you wherever you need it to go. But it also has all those ports to plug into to expand docking capability so that if you need to expand on it, you can do that as well. What a perfect little machine to be able to handle this type of work. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out here and we're going to go back into Windows mode and then we'll show off Need for Speed 2. Okay, so let's check out the game on here. We'll go to the C drive, we'll go to games. We'll go to Need for Speed 2 and now we can hit that Need for Speed Windows.exe. And interesting, you saw that little DOS window come up there. <laughs> so even though it's a a Windows executable. <laughs> All right. Now, I loved this game when I was younger. And, you know, this was a new game. Uh, one, because Need for Speed SE was one of the first, like, glide supporting games. So you could do that full 3D mode. And two, because it had like really fun cars in it, right? Like that McLaren F1. Now this is just the demo for Need for Speed. So you only have the Ford GT, but we can still show off what it feels like to uh, to race in here. You'll notice that the screen area is shrunk down a little bit. So there may be some working around you would need to do. Three, two, one, go. You might have to mess around a little bit to get the uh, resolution where you want it to be. But here we can head around Pacific Coast. And as far as racing experiences goes, Not bad. And Need for Speed was a really, it still is a big series now, right? Well, you get the picture. So, uh, you know, all in all, a really fun machine, being able to handle pretty much anything from a DOS game perspective that you can think of, and then being a pretty, you know, decent set up for a Windows 98 experience. I just love the fact that you, you know, bringing these machines back and you know, finding the old backgrounds and stuff to put on it. It's a lot of fun as well. So hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane if it was for you and uh, taking a look at what one of these systems is capable of. And uh, as always, thanks for stopping by. Hope you're staying safe and healthy and we'll catch you in the next one.